Um, I'm Dorothy Harlan, and I was asked to make a little speech, and it is a small one. Um, I have a little outline here. Over 60 years ago, God called Mr. Harlan and I to start a Bible college, and we prayed about it. We wrote papers about it. We talked about it. We planned how we would do it and what we would do with God's help. <clears throat> and then we needed a place to start a Bible college, and we met Brother uh, French, Rob French, in Tennessee, and discussed the possibility of having a Bible college here on the campground. He gave us permission, and we came down in 19... 58 to kind of get ready to start a school. The advantages of the having a Bible school here, one thing, we wouldn't have to have a heat bill, and I think you agree on that tonight. It's warm enough, it was warm enough in the winter time. Another thing, the camp had a good water supply, and you need plenty of water for young people, and it had some buildings. Now, the support plan that we agreed on was he would work to start the school, and guess what job he gave me? I was to be a public school teacher to support the school. Some reason, God gave me the ability, and I went to four different colleges and had four college degrees, and that gave me a place to teach any part of a school. And so that was to be my part. I was to teach school, supply the money, and all, for the first seven years, there was no salary from the school. And I always put a little money in Brother Heron's pocket, because I think all men should have a little money in their pocket. <laughs> I still believe that, man, so if you don't have any, see your wife. <laughs> um, we came in 1958 to get ready to do the school. The first camp that we were here, there was an offering taken, and that was the money used to build the boys' dorm. There's a man sitting in the audience tonight that gave the first thousand dollars. He was going to buy a new car. And he gave the money to the school, and the boys' dorm is the building that we built that year. To get furniture for that building, I went all over this campground with Mrs. French's uh, permission, and out of different rooms, I would get a chest of drawers, a dresser, a bed, a chair, or something to furnish the uh, dorm for the girls and the boys. Um, the first building, which is now the boys' dorm, the money was given, and Brother Carroll was the architect that planned and built that building. We opened school in 1960 with 20 students from various states. And if you're here tonight, you were probably 20 years of age at that time, and I guess you to be 70 tonight. We had three teachers, and Mr. Reed was here. I kind of wanted him to hear this, but he's already gone. Mrs. Reed, after one of the Christmas programs, she walked with Mr. Heron and I over to the little place where they were serving the students, and she said to Mr. Heron, when you came here to build a school, we thought you were a cult, and that we didn't know that we were going to like any of you because you were not our kind of a people. The reason I think she thought that, we had no students that smoked, none that used drugs, none that used foul language, and they dressed modestly. 
and they had a wonderful Christian testimony. But that's what Mrs. Reed said, that we started a cult. Then she proved later. Our students proved valuable to Jupiter Island because they became maids, nurses, household help, sh chauffeurs, of safety workers, cleaners, painters, and etc. Also, our four students in the 1960s worked at a flower farm. I guess some of you remember the flower farm. Our little girl, Jane, decided she wanted a job, and we let her work at the flower farm. It cost me more money for her to work than she ever made. One reason, she lost her contact lens, and I had to buy a new one. Another time, she hurt her hand with something she was cutting flowers with, and I had to pay for a tetanus shot. So she cost me more money working for the flower farm than she ever made, and finally, I convinced her to stop. Um, this school has produced a number of wonderful missionaries. The Newtons are here today, and they were among our first missionaries. We have had uh, many students to fill church pulpits. We have medical doctors that have graduated from this school. We have lawyers. We have outstanding uh, teachers. We have even politicians, now not Obama's kind, excuse me. <laughs> I agree with that, so but don't call and tell him that I said that. <laughs> we have wonderful family groups that came out of this old school. Tonight, I am delighted, I am glad to welcome you. When we started 50 years ago, I never dreamed that, well, one of the last things, the week, the last week that Brother Heron lived, he said to me, I never dreamed the little school would last for this many years. And, but God was in it, he planned it, he helped us through every, every aspect of the school. One note about Dr. Heron, who was president and was director of the school for 25 years. I'm sure that if he was living, he would like to see all of you, and he would like to review with you all he knew about the Apostle Paul. Some of you know that he was a great advocate of the Apostle Paul. I don't know whether he's looking down from heaven tonight, but I actually believe that he went to heaven. He did a wonderful work, and I have to brag on myself a little bit. I was a wonderful helpmate. One night, it, it was two in the morning, he came home from the school, and by the way, we lived in that little Pepto-Bismol pink house <laughs> right across the street, and we paid Brother French $60 a month to live in that house. We didn't have any heat, and of course, the school never in the 25 years we were here had any air condition, but we survived. And I'm in pretty good health tonight, except for a broken knee. But um, it was wonderful to work here. It was wonderful to see you tonight. And it's wonderful to know that you took the effort to come back to celebrate the 50 years. I doubt if many of you will be back 50 from tonight. <laughs> but I trust that we'll all meet in the wonderful heaven, the glory world that God has prepared for us. It has been a great, great delight to see all of you. Please remember me, pray for me, and I have a house here. It's hard to beg my daughter to let me come back to Florida, 
but I did get to come this year. And uh, one little thing, I live in Charlotte, and uh, the little Emily Jane that you knew here is quite a good doctor now. She married a doctor, and our oldest daughter is a doctor. And if Obama stop, gets his medical bill through, we have th I have three doctors he can't touch. <laughs> the Lord bless you and remember me, because I doubt if I'll be here when you, the next 50 years. So, but I've enjoyed every day and often, often. I think of the school. But one thing I need to mention, the last week that Dr. Heaven, Heron lived, he prayed for you and this school. I heard him every morning about 4 o'clock. Thank you.